7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum Radio 1 FM 90. Hello, a very <coughs> warm welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. I'm your host, Edmond Chizito. On Spectrum tonight, the state of population in Uganda. Is this country responding to reproductive health issues that are key for a quality population? Tomorrow, a report detailing the state of the population of Uganda will be launched by the Population Secretariat in conjunction with the United Nations Fund for Population Activities, or UNFPA. This year, the State of the Population Report analyzes reproductive issues in the context of current national priorities and the resultant impact on future development and economic well-being. The theme of this report is Population and Reproductive Health, Broadening Opportunities for Development. Experts on population issues continue to point out the fact that the population of Uganda is growing rapidly and that this will be dangerous to the nation given the limited resources and facilities. They argue that if Uganda took seriously proposed interventions contained in the reproductive health policies, this country would have a quality and sustainable population. Unfortunately, like many other good policies, reproductive health interventions have continued to be given less attention, leading to unwanted pregnancies, large and planned families, negative impact on national development, and maternal health challenges, among other things. A number of gaps have been identified in the delivery of families' planning services, reproductive health education for the youth, service delivery in health centers, to mention but a few. Now, as we prepare for the launch of this report, we reflect on Spectrum on a number of issues so far uh, in order to be able to understand if we are doing enough uh, as a country through reproductive health to deal with the issues emerging about our population. Our guest tonight, Mr. Isaiah Mbuga, National Program Officer, Information and Communications Department at POPSEC. That's the Population Secretary. You're most welcome, Mr. Mbuga. Thank you. We're also joined by Ms. Margaret Dimitri Namuyobo, Medical Coordinator at Reproductive Health Uganda. You're most welcome, Margaret. Thank you. Let's talk about the, the state of population in Uganda. Isaiah, tomorrow you're launching this report on the state of the population in Uganda. Can you tell us what it says and what the state of our population is right now? Uh, thank you, Edmund. Um, nothing much has changed from, uh, from last year. We still experience a very high maternal death. We still experience a very high infant mortality. Uh, we still uh, experience very high teenage pregnancies and the population is uh, equally very poor. In fact, the inflation has pushed because originally we are looking at people who could afford 2,000 shillings a day. But right now, 2,000 shillings a day uh, to a dollar, I mean, it buys very little. Yeah, it buys very little. So, so the the number of people who have been forced into the the poor, the absolute the the, 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 po the 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 poor, the poorest of the poor, right. has actually gone up with the inflation, and uh, these are serious issues um, that uh, must be addressed. And you know, when when inflation comes, then people's choices have to change from what they want to what they actually need. So um, even if reproductive health products remained at the same price because food costs have gone up, it mm. becomes more difficult to afford. And so we are going to see within a year's time a number of children that have been born because mothers cannot afford contraceptives and they have had husbands to take care of. So, and the husbands cannot afford the reproductive health materials. Or if they could afford the materials, the woman must walk five miles to go and access because transport costs have gone up. So when we begin to look at all these issues, we, we will begin to see how the already marginalized are now double marginalized. And uh, what is the government mind right now? Do they see these problems as you see them as an expert or do they think you know, it's business as usual? I don't know what to make of this because um, we, 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 think, we think government can do much, you know? But uh, because of the other factors, we do not see uh, it translating into the action that is desired by us. Because the, the 
some people still call us alarmists. Yeah, yet the things we are talking about is not we are not alarming. The things we've been talking about. I, I was here the last time you invited me. We talked about Chaco. I told you Chaco was going to get to eighty thousand shillings. Mm -hmm. Today it is. Which it did. Nine. It is. Yes. And some people just think because of my other calling that I prophesy stuff, but <laughs> it's not it. You just need to sit down and analyze because when we were here, Chaco was about forty thousand. That's true. Then I told you it's going to double. And it did. Be and now it has doubled. It's eighty thousand. And the reason why it is doubling because forests have been cut down. We have again the poor mm. who are marginalizing the environment, yeah, so they can survive. Then you have the middle class that is marginalizing the poor so they can also survive. If you have a maid who has three kids and you pay this maid 30,000 shillings, mm. you know. I don't see why this government can, this parliament cannot pass the, 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 the minimum wage. Because the minimum wage is going to solve these problems in a great deal. Would it contribute to unemployment? No, it will not. It will, it will enhance. Because right now we have people who, have, who are in disguised employment. Yes. The people who are working. Now, just imagine you have a maid. Disguised unemployment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The maid works yes. from 6 a.m. Mm. to Even 10 p.m. Right. Mm. But you pay them 30,000 and you tell them, you stay in my house, you eat my food and what. Now, even if this maid has a husband, and you tell her to buy a cycle of pills, mm. yeah? I, I mean, and then they have children to take care of, school fees to pay, on the 30,000. But if the minimum wage is set, it is going to raise the, the capacity of women who are mostly underpaid. It's going to increase because when you consider uh, people in Uganda who have skills, I was saying the other day that in P1 we get 1 million enrollment, kids enrolling. Yes. But at university you get a total output, people graduating from university with a degree, diploma, certificate, 39,000. Right, roughly 40,000. Yeah, 40, where does out the 960 go? Out of, out of the 1 million, only close to half a million sit P7. Right. Yeah, where does the 400,000 go mm. and tell me that a person who has dropped out at P7 level or before P7 has the capacity to earn you know we've also discovered through the UDHS that there is no difference between a person who is at P7 level and a person who didn't go to school at all mm. in terms of understanding understanding what understanding them issues. The, the life issues life issues because they asked women who hadn't been to, to who hadn't been to primary school and those who had dropped out at P7 they asked them what is your safe period they both the, all they the both no groups they had no clue mm. so you can't tell me a person who can't read or write you tell them even if they are to use moon beads how do they count so P7 is not you, you really haven't gone no 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 I mean when you look at that. that's why for me every time I go on air I, I insist that we should have a change mm. and, and how many how many how many people don't go beyond P7 it's 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 almost half half of those that enroll in P1 so don't out of one million people about half enroll in P1 yeah half, half a million they drop out at that at that rate mm. and if in fact they drop out before P7 and again after P7 and that 100 150 drops off so that people who go to S1 mm. are, are actually between uh, 300 and 350,000. The ones who complete, yes, and now those who go up to Senior S6 five. are 100,000. Those who sit at S6 are 100,000, right. mm. and those who go from S6 to, to university to tertiary, the ones they, who graduate, they, they are about 40,000. 40 mm. 4 percent, yeah. Of the ones so, who so, when we when we, okay, you consider how can a person who has dropped out at that level practice modern agriculture how can they practice modern family planning which involves calculation you, even if you wrote 67 percent of Ugandans can't read so you write and put billboards up who's gonna read them you write stuff with directions for use who's gonna read them people can't read so you tell them you know take this pill on the first day of your bleeding who's gonna read that I right. can't read. We'll talk about that. Like you talked to give us the context later about USE and how it has failed <laughs> to mop those numbers up. Margaret, yes. if you had to press a, a button, mm -hmm. where would you start to you know to balance these things out? You know, he has Isaiah brought it very well that we have a real high maternity ratio in Uganda, which is at four hundred and thirty five per hundred live births. Four hundred and thirty five. Four hundred and thirty five per one thousand. Per one hundred thousand live births. 
that is unacceptable. People are dying like chicken, honestly. Developed countries, you find a maternal mortality ratio of one to two per hundred thousand life. And they know honestly what killed this woman. They will really investigate and they see the whole world, the whole country. We know that in the village X, Nakulavi, that person had died of this, this thing. Here, right now, as I talk, so a woman is gasping and is dying. Really, the rate at which women are dying, this is really unacceptable. And all oh, this is reproductive health. He mentioned about the, the high, giving birth. Yes, he mentioned about the high infant mortality ratio, which is at 76 per 1,000 life, yeah, 1,000 life births. You know, before these are 1,000 babies celebrate their first birthday, you don't have a dog, 76 graves. Honestly, imagine counting 1 to up to 10, 20 up to 76 every year. This is a must, and babies are dying. And this is one of the issues why women even are delivering more because they are worried some of the children will oh, die. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of insurance. Why should you get a pregnant and you are even a bonus that this one is going to die, this one will do what? Will really survive. All that is also unacceptable. He mentioned about the teenage fertility, I mean the unmet, okay, fine. We have a high unmet need of contraception for family planning, honestly, right. at forty one percent. That is very high. Women out there they are yearning, they want to use but they are not using family planning. Remember this is the only weapon to fight against the high maternal mortality ratio. When women are using family planning, they don't get unwanted pregnancies. They get pregnancies which they want. You can even plan that Christmas I should have a baby during that eve. And in order to have Christmas I should conceive at around this time. You stop Much. using your contraception yeah. and you become pregnant so that by that time you honestly you have a baby. But here people are just finding themselves. Oh, Nick, last month I didn't go into the period. Remember that is already an unwanted what? An yeah. unwanted child. Unwanted they are ending into unsafe abortion because they didn't want that child. And the unsafe abortion it is done in a crude way. They are using hangers. They are using uh, rubs. Crude methods. Yeah, crude methods. Uh, hubs. Honestly, they are dying. And remember, uh, you know, it is a, there is a big proportion of this maternal mortality which is really proper, which is really attributed to abortions. All that is as a result of not using family planning. But use family planning and you really plan for your pregnancy as well. And that definitely, this woman will not die, honestly. People are attending at mental care center, but very few are having safe deliveries, okay? You know, all these are issues really to be discussed upon, and all this is what? Reproductive health. So if the government had to spend money, which are the future priorities? If they had the money to spend, where should they put the money? Oh, okay, thank you very much. That is a very good question, Edmond. Honestly, first of all, I ensure that there is enough contraceptives. Let people create awareness. Let people know about family planning. Let them use. There are different modes of providing these methods. You can use a static center like health facilities, like uh, static clinics. You can use out community, I mean uh, outreaches, yeah. yeah, outreaches where the, the trained service providers go to identified places on specific days and offer these services. They are b going further to the communities because 90% of the population you mentioned live in rural areas. Uh, maybe the health centers are slightly near to the urban. So it is important if people don't come to you, remember they are not sick. They don't have transport history cited it very clearly, Isaiah. So, what if to get food and to travel long distance to go and get a contraceptive, which will one will you do what? They are not sick, remember, which one will you opt for? Yeah. So, service providers let's go near to the population in the rural communities and provide these services. He has cited the village health teams. We are training health work, I not health worker, village health teams. These are identified people in the communities, identified by the community who really command respect in the community. Yeah. When they say something on Honestly, the people in the communities will believe. And they are trained by a program. At the end of the day, they go back and safely offer sexual and reproductive health services, more special information to the population in the communities. And, uh, you know, it is interlinked. They mobilize the communities. People go for the outreaches. And there should be a defined referral network. Women who can't access all methods which can't be given at the outreach sites should be referred to the static centers I've mentioned. So it is really a defined referral network. Network. So that really, if we work hand in hand with that, we will really increase the, the the what the contraceptive prevalence rate. Honestly, it is at 23 percent. All right. Meaning, out of 100 women, only 23 are using. I'm just excited and eager to hear the new what figures. Tomorrow. Figures. I know, not fig tomorrow, but. Uh, 
what you know they're about to announce the new what the new Uganda demographic and health survey of the recent what we are the, the figures I'm trying to mention is the one of 200 2006 right yeah so government needs to spend more on family planning and the quality of health exactly health training health service, service providers training is very important there is high level of rumors and misconceptions people are not using family planning because they are fearing side effects these side effects don't kill if you put a side effect on the weighing scale and the output the dangers of not using family planning and dying definitely this one will outweigh the other one what are some of the family planning methods okay there are different various family planning methods we have the temporary methods meaning that you can use and later have children when you want yes. and there are those which are permanent meaning that if you really are tired that I don't have even if all the five children I have are in the tax and are killed I do I mean they you have want want to I don't want children. so that one why should that person really continue with the CBL short-term methods can you go for permanent. permanent methods which are those so before you, you go permanent let us look at the short-term methods yes. yeah this was uh, those we okay we have the pills for example we have the injection injector plan pill. you take a pill every you month. take a pill every day every okay, day every day yeah until you don't want to, until you have one to have a child and you stop then there is injection and the injections they are those for one month for two months and for three months the commonly use is the one for three months then we have the implants implants are also free to, no sorry to the third one has been phased out in the country the one for the six rods right. they are inserted under the inner upper arm and it works for a period of five years or three years they put something in your arm yes it is a, just a capsule it a is capsule. a rod like a matchstick right yeah one works for a period of three years it is called implant on and after then, that they pluck it out or what or after the three years they remove and put another one that is if you still don't want to have pregnant a baby but if you want any time even pluck before yeah even three years it and can be will removed come. definitely and that one refer to it return immediately in it has three modes of all let me say how it works it has three modes of action one it um, it thickens the cervical mucus and makes it difficult for the sperms to penetrate and to go right. and uh, fertilize the egg. Right. Then secondly, it makes the lining of the womb unsuitable for implantation. Even if fertilization took place, definitely no implantation will take place. Uh -huh. Then thirdly, it may prevent ovulation. Ovulation is the release of the right. egg from every month. Every month. So it, they it go to it. sleep, it doesn't kill it. Right. That is where people so get woman will not have a menstrual cycle. Uh, Caucasian, they continue having, but uh, the minority group they may it may disrupt the menstrual changes right. maybe may, some may decrease some for certain months may not go into periods and some may slightly bleed on and off but all those are re rectified when they go back to the health facilities right. then other methods and how expensive is that before you continue right now the ministry really is fighting hard and really uh, in the last technical working group meeting I attended the director general emphasized that the methods be as much as free possible. How much do you pay for it now? Uh, right now, in the where you find a, red, a rainbow for a yellow flower, it is free. It is given free. It's free of charge. It is free of they charge. They give you an injection in but the But certain, pardon? It's not painful. It does not. It is not painful. It is that by the time we start this program, I would have inserted even over ten people. Really? Honestly, when you find experts, they really do it very well and fast. Right. And you know, it has been comfortable, and I'm seeing women shifting even from other method coming to that method. Is it a new method? It I wouldn't say it is new because it has stayed some several years ago, but the others are it is being put on board. People are getting to know it of the recent, not that it is working miracles. Right. Otherwise, it has been on board for a long time. And in other countries, you know, we started with no plant, which is six rods. Now they have modernized it here. It is, we have Jader, which is two rods, it works for five years, and the one which is called implant, and it works for a period of three years. Then we have other methods like intra train device. This is a device which is placed inside IUD. the womb, IUD, yeah. and it works for a period of 12 years. By 12 years. 12 years. You know, it doesn't go in the bloodstream. It just sits in it's the It's not uterus. even painful. It is not even painful, you know. You don't feel it. I've inserted several women and they say, Musao, sorry. Have you, have you, have you done? <laughs> have you it? done? That is the local language. That Musao, are you finished? You know, then it clears a lot of what? Rumors and misconception which they had. These ones go back and motivate others and they come 
for the use. If people really should appreciate what the, how this method works and how it is, we would really register many of them for this method. It is very Which one is most at demand? The 12-year one is probably at the extreme. Then you have the monthly ones also. No, the intra uterine device is standard. It is the one in use in the country is Copa T388. Yes. It works for a period of 12 years and it is, uh, you know, and it is see, effective. You can pluck it out when you want to. Uh, so remove it. It is not easy that yourself you pluck it. You have to go back go to, to the health center. Yeah, yeah, and she removes it. They get it out. Yeah, they get it out. When you want to rest, you, you can rest. Yeah, other methods include the natural methods, moon beads, then the barrier methods, which include the condoms. And remember, we have both female condoms and, and male, male condoms. Condom. You know, the other methods, spermicides, jerrys, creams, tablets. How do spermicides work? The spermicides are inserted inside the birth canal yes. and they prevent the sperms. You know, they, they kill them. I don't want to use that kill. <laughs> they they the, neutralize them. They neutralize the, yeah, so that really it is they like. Can't fertilize uh, an egg. Oh, exactly. I'll give an analogy of walking into a mad day. Yeah. Road right. and uh, somebody who is uh, really running you through, can't run you can't run fast. And uh, by the time delaying you, to, it's lifespan definitely will because get off when it is meandering around and it right. can't work faster. That is the miracle against the spermicides. This is Spectrum on Radio One tonight. The state of population in Uganda is this country responding to reproductive health issues that are key for a quality population? We're going for a break, we'll be back. John, Mike, and I, we go back a bit. We knew John at the beginning, working for someone else. But he was different. He had vision, saw opportunities. He started working towards his goal, opened his own garage, and worked, learning the hard way. His reputation spread. Trust, consistency, quality. Soon, people were coming to him from all parts. He made himself and his whole street prosper and also helped friends seeing potential in people and helping them on. But John never shouts about all his success. He's just who he is. Special. So here's to men like John who make a difference, who enjoy Nile Special, the rich, satisfying taste from the sauce. Nile Special. You've earned it. Not for sale to persons under 18. Maria! Maria! Hey! Mom, what are you doing here? I forgot to spread on the other slice, Maria. Take this. Hey, Mrs. Makumbi! What are you doing here? You know, mm. Blue Band helps my child grow. That's why I spread on every slice. Every slice spread with Blue Band is an opportunity for your child to grow. So, moms, spread on every slice. Daily Blue Band, daily growth. Is your internet provider turning your world upside down? <sighs> Broadband Company offers fast and reliable internet solutions. And for the first 100 subscribers this month, we offer zero connection fees. Save up to 400,000. For more information on these offers, call toll free 0800 222 Broadband Company, more than you expect. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90 is brought to you by Standing Bank. Welcome back on Spectrum tonight. The state of population in Uganda is the country responding to reproductive health issues that are key for a quality population. Our guest tonight, Mr. Isaiah Mbuga, National Program Officer, Information and Communications Department at POPSEC, that's the Population Secretariat, and Ms. Margaret Dimitra Namuyobo, Medical Coordinator at Reproductive Health Uganda. He'll be able to call into this discussion and contribute or even ask questions. I'll read out the numbers when that time comes. Isaiah, what can we do to get manage this situation? Okay, we can do several things. Uh, first of all, we need to understand what quality is. When we talk about a quality population, these are people who are educated, who are healthy, yeah, who are well fed. A quarter of all women in Uganda are stunted. A quarter of the women are stunted? Yeah, they're stunted. And this will result in two them requiring a cesarean section mm. when they get to give birth. Mm. And shorter standard, women. Shorter women, if you are shorter than 1.5, 150 centimeters, mm. Mm. You by, by general standards, you require mm. an operation to remove the baby. Give the mm. birth, yes. Otherwise, and then these are the very people. First of all, you become stunted because you feed badly. Nutrition is poor. Yes. Nutrition is poor because 
you are poor right you don't have money to buy <coughs> stuff that will make you grow right into a healthy person yes now um a person who can't afford food will by all means not afford education yes does it does it, do you see it's how I'm connecting yes so there's a correlation between uh, poor Poverty. nutrition and low education we've also discovered that if you are coming from a poor household you stand as